Assalamu alaikum. This is Dr. Hasna with Hasna's Nat Me. Welcome back to my channel. And today we are talking about the 10th nerve or the X nerve, the vagus nerve. So we are basically going to go through a basic neuroanatomy um, overview and then we're going to move on to the head and neck details of the vagus nerve anatomy. So guys, continue watching and do not forget to subscribe to my channel as I make anatomy a piece of cake. It originates in the medulla oblongata and as we all know, we need to talk about which nuclei it comes from, which nuclei are associated with the vagus nerve. So guys, I've written them right here. If you remember the nuclei of the glossopharyngeal nerve, they're almost the same. Just one nuclei has changed rather than the salivatory. I made it the dorsal motor nucleus of the vagus nerve. Add that and then rest of them are the same as the glossopharyngeal nerve. These are the four nuclei associated with the vagus nerve. And then we talk about the fibers of the vagus nerve, like what exactly is the vagus nerve going to supply. The vagus nerve 2 is a mixed nerve, which means it carries multiple fibers. It has to give motor supply, gustatory supply, sensory supply, uh, parasympathetic supply. So all of these fibers are in more formal terms known as the special or general afferent or efferent fibers. So those are the fibers we're going to review right now. But before we do that, I want to make it a little easy for you because that's how we work in my uh, channel. There has to be some, some trick to learn confusing things. So guys, I want you to memorize uh, these. So all you have to uh, put in your head is swim, swat, guep, and guas. I know they're kind of a weird mnemonic. Trust me, Learning these is easier than learning individually what these are. I'll tell you in a while. Basically, keep it in your mind. Keep uh, saying them throughout the day so that they can like stick to your mind. So first is swim, swat, guep, guas. Swim, swat, guep, guas. Even I learned it. So guys, you should definitely give that a try, right? So why am I teaching you all of these? These are the basic fibers or the functional components of the vagus nerve. Special visceral efferents. These are always going to be M, the motor fibers. The special visceral afferent are always going to be the taste fibers. General visceral efferent will always be the parasympathetic fibers. The general visceral afferent are always going to be S for sensory fibers. From the CNS to the periphery, taking a signal is the efferent. From the periphery to the CNS, uh, a signal is the afferent fiber taking it. Basically, we're talking about what the vagus nerve is going to basically overall supply. So it has to supply your entire palate area, pharynx and larynx, and it even will supply all your thoracic and abdominal organs with parasympathetic supply. So vagus nerve is the chief parasympathetic nerve. It has a lot of secretomotor fibers that it has to give a lot of places. Not it does. It is the longest nerve. It doesn't only really remain confined to the upper regions. It goes to the thorax, goes to the abdomen. Keep that in mind. Motor fibers to the palate pharynx and larynx these muscles are supplied by the special visceral efferent fibers motor fibers of the vagus nerve and we've already talked about the motor nucleus is always going to be the nucleus ambiguous so these fibers are all going to be beginning from the nucleus ambiguous next is a special visceral afferent now swat t t means taste so the vagus carries taste from the posterior most part of the tongue and the uh, epiglottis and it takes it to which taste i told you Two of the sensations is the taste and the sensory uh, sensations are always going to go to the tractus solitarius. New. Tractus solitarius because T is for the taste, S is for the sensory supply and T, S is the tractus solitarius nucleus. That makes so much sense. Oh my God. Always remember that. Therefore, the taste fibers are all going to go to the tractus solitarius nucleus. Next, we have the general visceral efferent. I wonder what uh, the fibers are going to be in this. So it's GWEP. P. So that means parasympathetic. So the parasympathetic supply of the vagus is given chiefly to the thoracic and abdominal viscera. What are these? The heart, the lungs, the stomach, uh, the intestine also. It gives motility to that. So it gives parasympathetic supply and through the general visceral efferent. And these are going to be beginning from the dorsal motor nucleus of the vagus nerve. Now, uh, I just want to uh, quote something important. Dorsal motor nucleus of the vagus is a nucleus that is a mixed nucleus. It has uh, parasympathetic or the secretomotor fibers and it also has the viscerosensory fibers, right? So some sensory fibers will also go into the dorsal motor vagus of the nucleus, which I'll talk to you about right now. So let's talk about the next is the general visceral afferent. These are guas sensory, right? So the sensory fibers are going to be supplied to all your pharynx, larynx, trachea, esophagus, and even all those organs uh, that vagus is supplying, GID organs and thoracic organs. All of the sensations are going to go and they, we already talked about sensory fibers always go to the tractus solitarius. But once again, I said that dorsal motor has also some sensory fibers. Therefore, these fibers partly also go into the dorsal motor nucleus of the vagus. 
big. Uh, general sensory afferent fibers finally these give general sensation to the ear and always G GSA these fibers are always are going to end up in the spinal nucleus of the trigeminal nerves, right? So that is neuroanatomical course of the vagus. So let's move ahead and talk about the gross anatomy of the vagus nerve. What is gross? Gross means anything we can see from our naked eye. So we all know all those fibers are going to leave from the medulla oblongata. That is where it originates from the vagus nerve. And all these fibers are tiny fibers. We cannot see them, right? They're all confined to this one nerve called the vagus nerve, the 10th nerve, the longest nerve and the largest parasympathetic supply of the body. All those fibers that we just talked about are going to go and spread out, but that's not our problem. We're just going to talk about how this nerve is going to course and what branches it will give. First, it will go through the jugular foramen. We all know the 9, 10 and 11 nerve are all going to be present in the jugular foramen. So vagus nerve is lying posterior to the glossopharyngeal nerve. And once it uh, leaves through the jugular foramen, it will leave the cranial cavity. And after that, it enters your carotid sheath. The carotid sheath, it lies medial to the internal jugular vein, lateral to the uh, internal carotid artery. And basically it is posteriorly placed in that carotid sheath. We all know that. Then the vagus goes down and it goes to the root of the neck after which it enters your thorax. In the thorax, it gives uh, branches. All those branches, they go and spread out in the thorax. They go spread out in the abdomen. And that's how the vagus nerve is just going to end up in branches. First, in the jugular foramen, there is a ganglion of the vagus nerve known as the superior ganglion. And then below it, there is another inferior ganglion. The branches that are arising from superior and inferior ganglion are important. Let's talk about the superior ganglion branches. First branch is known as the meningeal branch. This is going to enter the cranial cavity because it's like a meningeal. It's kind of a recurrent branch, so uh, it doesn't go below. It rather goes back inside the cranial cavity, the meningeal branch, and goes to supply the posterior cranial fossas, meninges, or dura matter. All right. Then we have the auricular branch goes to the external acoustic meander through the tympanomastoid fissure. It uh, enters that area of the ear. And then it supplies the tympanic membrane, some part of the external acoustic meatus. It also supplies the root of the auricle. Let's talk about the inferior ganglion branches, right? First thing I want you to know over here is that, listen to me very carefully, the vagus nerve is joined by fibers of the cranial root of the 11th nerve. Can you remember that? The 11th nerve's cranial root uh, fibers come and they just go into the inferior ganglion and they join first branch that emerges from the inferior ganglion which is the pharyngeal branch and now we all know in the pharyngeal branch there are fibers from the 11th nerve so that makes a lot of sense right so the pharyngeal branch branch what it does it goes to the middle constrictor of the pharynx pharynx uh, pharynx obviously because pharyngeal and in the middle constrictor over here it forms a plexus pharyngeal plexus of nerve and from the pharyngeal plexus the supply is given to the entire pharynx mostly the muscles of the pharynx and the muscles of the palate but i want you to remember over here all muscles are supplied, but in the palate, only one muscle is not supplied. This is the tensor villi palatini supplied by the mandibular nerve. And in the pharynx muscle, all muscles are supplied by the vagus nerve and the 11th nerve, except for which one? Which uh, muscle did we associate with one nerve and one nerve only it was the stylopharyngeus supplied by glossopharyngeus. So you have to exclude that for the vagus nerve. Otherwise, it supplies all those muscles of the pharynx. How important is this? Because if any lesion occurs, pharynx is gone, right? Pharyngeal branch given. Next branch that arises is the carotid branch. Now, carotid branch is going to go to the carotid sinus and carotid body. We all know where that is. We all know the function of it. And that's where it goes. The next branch we have superior laryngeal nerve. So what happens is now it gives a branch called the superior laryngeal nerve goes to the middle constrictor. The superior laryngeal nerve, what it does, it divides into two. One is the internal laryngeal nerve and second is the external laryngeal nerve. Internal laryngeal, the name says it, that what it's going to supply is inside the larynx, which means mucous membranes of the larynx up to the vocal folds. So let's suppose this is the larynx. These are the vocal folds. This entire area is supplied by the internal laryngeal nerve above the vocal folds, uh, its mucous membrane. External laryngeal goes, pierces the thyrohyoid membrane and supplies on one muscle known as the cricothyroid muscle. Next, we move on to the next branch. Your inferior ganglion is giving us the right recurrent laryngeal nerve. Now, the right recurrent laryngeal nerve, I want you to focus over here. The right recurrent laryngeal nerve, once it arises, it arises at the area of the right subclavian artery. I hope you can remember that. It's very important because right subclavian artery, but the left arises from somewhere else. And that is an important point to know. In the right side, right recurrent is arising from the right subclavian artery below it. All right, below it. And then it goes, because it's recurrent, it's going to go back up and it enters the tracheoesophageal groove. What does it supply? It basically supplies the tracheal branches, it gives esophageal branches, and most importantly, it supplies all the internal laryngeal muscles. So we've supplied the pharyngeal muscles, what about the muscles of the larynx? 
all supplied by recurrent laryngeal nerves right? except for the cricothyroid which we all know was supplied by the external laryngeal right all and plus uh, the muscles and the sensory supply below the vocal cords is also supplied by these recurrent laryngeal nerves all right so the sensory mucous membrane supply and the all muscle supply is derived from these recurrent laryngeal nerve how important are these nerves uh, one difference i want to remember the left recurrent laryngeal nerve now that arises from the vagus nerve not from the inferior ganglion rather just from the nerve itself and it arises more below in the thorax all right in the thorax it arises and it uh, basically arises where the aortic arch is kept all right that is the landmark for where the left recurrent laryngeal nerve arises it loops around the ligamentum arteriosum and it goes back once again to the tracheoesophageal groove and i've uh, talked about the branches of the recurrent laryngeal nerve and that's what it supplies and we're done with these two then finally we have the cardiac branch the cardiac branches it gives are the superior and inferior branches now the superior and inferior branches are going to basically give cardio inhibitory fibers to the heart which means it it plays a role to uh, slow down the heart and uh, apart from that now the vagus nerve is free and it goes and supplies various plexuses like the pulmonary plexus all the plexuses of nerves that are to the thoracic and abdominal viscera like the celiac plexus the pulmonary plexus over here and then the gastrointestinal gastric plexuses and it supplies all those areas with parasympathetic fibers even sensory fibers right and that is how our vagus nerve comes to an end now let's talk about a clinical clinicals are super easy because obviously if the vagus nerve is damaged we all know that all of these things are gone and it can turn out to be fatal if bilateral paralysis occurs it basically is going to cause increase in heart rate we know why gastrointestinal motility problems will arise because it ha plays a role on that all the laryngeal muscles are gone so obviously hoarseness of the voice will be seen your soft palate the uvula that you see is going to be deviated to the normal side there will be nasal regurgitation of the food. there will be impaired gag reflex difficulty in swallowing because all of these muscles the vagus nerve was supplying i really hope i made it easy for you uh, do not forget to subscribe to my channel and thank you so much for watching